Finally, stand we begin our celebration. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the peace of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My friends, welcome to our celebration. We welcome our visitors and also those who are praying with us virtually at home. We get in this beautiful church of St. Peter's, and we acknowledge the great month of May to be the month of Mary, the mother of the Lord. So we give praise to Mary, the Blessed Mother. And as we pray this night, we pray for our world, especially the many who are suffering with COVID-19, for the many thousands of people throughout our world, we pray for God's healing, God's blessings. So Christ Jesus, through the scriptures this night, reminds us he is divine, and we are the branches. With humility, we ask the Lord to bless us. Lord Jesus, you are divine, and we are the branches. Help us to bear fruit daily by living works of charity and words of good deeds and actions. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, help us to live the way of the scriptures to be people of encouragement. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, bring peace to the hearts of those whose lives are in turmoil. Bring healing to those who are suffering from the disease COVID-19. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Jesus. 
Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God the Father. Amen. 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 Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, constantly accomplish the paschal mystery within us that those you are pleased to make new in holy baptism may, under your protective care, bear much fruit and come to the joys of life eternal through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When Saul had come to Jerusalem, he attempted to join the disciples, and they were all afraid of him, for they did not believe that he was a disciple. But Barnabas took him, brought him to the apostles, and described for them how on the road he had seen the Lord who had spoken to him, and how in Damascus Saul had spoken boldly in the name of Jesus. So Saul went in and out among them in Jerusalem, speaking boldly in the name of the Lord. He spoke and argued with the Hellenists, but they were attempting to kill him. When the believers learned of it, they brought Saul down to Caesarea and sent him off to Tarsus. Meanwhile, the church throughout Judea, Galilee, and Samaria had peace and was built up. Living in the fear of the Lord and in the comfort of the Holy Spirit, it increased in numbers. The word of the Lord. I will praise your name forever, my King and my God. My vows I will pay before those who fear him. The poor shall eat and shall have their fill. They shall praise the Lord, those who seek him. May their hearts live forever and ever. I will praise your name forever, my King and my God. All the earth shall remember and return to the Lord. All families of the nations worship before him. They shall worship him, all the mighty of the earth. Before him shall bow all who go down to the dust. I will praise your name forever, my King and my God. And my soul shall live for him, my children serve him. They shall tell of the Lord to generations yet to come. Declare his faithfulness to peoples yet unborn. These things the Lord has done. I will praise your name forever, my King. A reading from the first letter of St. John. Little children, let us love not in word or speech, but in truth and action. 
and by this we will know that we are from the truth and will reassure our hearts before him whenever our hearts condemn us. For God is greater than our hearts and God knows everything. Beloved, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have boldness before God and we receive from him whatever we ask because we obey his commandments and do what pleases him. And this is his commandment, that we should believe the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and love one another just as he has commanded us. Whoever obeys his commandments abides in him, and he abides in them. And by this we know that he abides in us by the spirit that he has given us. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Jesus said to his disciples, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine grower. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit he prunes to make it bear even more fruit. You have already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me as I abide in you. For indeed, as just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever abides in me and I in them bears much fruit, because apart from me you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away, is like a branch and withers. Such branches are gathered, they were thrown into the fire and they are burned. If you abide in me and my word abides in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and then become my disciples. The Gospel of the Lord. My friends, throughout the 50 days of the Easter season, and this is the fifth week of the Easter season. There are very powerful parables that remind us of God's desire to share an intimacy with us. Whether it is in the upper room when Jesus appeared to the disciples after the resurrection, his first message was, peace be with you. And of course, just a few Sundays ago, it was Jesus on the road to Emmaus, revealing himself to the disciples and they recognized him in the breaking of the bread in the opening of scriptures. Last Sunday, Jesus acknowledged that he was the good shepherd, always willing to lay down his life for his friends. And today the church proclaims with great victory, Jesus is divine and we are the branches. Our Holy Father, Pope Francis says, it is because we are the branches of the vine that we have a true responsibility for each other because we share a community of believers. And as a community of believers, we always graft ourselves to the vine, Jesus Christ, as he is within us, so too we are within him. And as we reflect on our call to be the branches of the Lord Jesus, we look around the events within our world and we see very easily that our world is scarred by many cities and by many issues that bring conflict 
and bloodshed throughout the world, where it is the rise in racism, division in the United States and all of the cities pretty well, there is a great cry for reconciliation, for hope to be restored within our world. And despite all the beautiful stories or the parables that the 50 days of Easter tell us about Sunday after Sunday, there is one person in scripture that gets very little attention. And that is in the first reading night from the Acts of the Apostles. We see the man whose name is Barnabas. And the name Barnabas means the son of encouragement. It is only because of Barnabas that St. Paul became part of the church. Because put into perspective, Saul, who later became Paul, Saul was the one that persecuted the first Christians. He had them put to death because they believed in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And so Paul, Saul rather has a change of heart. Saul becomes Paul on the road to Damascus and became a believer in Jesus Christ. So Paul, after conversion, comes back to the city, Antioch and Jerusalem and many other cities. And then he says to the disciples, I want to be one with you. The disciples themselves had much fear. That's what the Acts of the Apostles says. They had great fear of this man, Paul, and they did not want anything to do with him. A just reason, perhaps. A justified reason. So then Barnabas comes along. This is the moment. Barnabas comes along, who is a disciple of the risen Lord. Barnabas basically says, he's changed heart. He now wants to witness to Jesus Christ. And so Barnabas assures the disciples that this man is okay, that he will be faithful to the risen Lord. And so it is because of Barnabas that he brings Paul to the apostles and thus the great missionary example of love continues. So the church sees Barnabas, this man whose name is son of encouragement. The church sees Barnabas as a man that truly is encouraging others to follow the way of the Lord. He is not a wall that divides, but rather he is a bridge that connects. It is Barnabas that gives us the great example that we are caring and we are called to care for each other. It is because of Barnabas that we likewise reflect on our missionary work. Do we build bridges? Do we connect Christ to others? Because he is divine. And we have an awesome responsibility not to shove people away or push them away because of personalities or issues, but rather because we are grafted to Jesus Christ. And so we have an awesome responsibility. So Barnabas is a great model for the church today. If there is ever a time that Barnabas could be the right saint of the church, it is now because Barnabas will be a great blessing to bring reconciliation where there is division. Barnabas is the one that we see. Wherever he sees mistrust, Barnabas brings trust. Wherever there is hatred, he brings love. Rage and anxiety, Barnabas calms everyone down. It is through the prayer of Barnabas, instead of injustice, there is, inju there is justice, and instead of doubt, there is faith. And so my friends, we reflect on our lives tonight. In the midst of all the chaos of our world, we often say, what is happening? With the great hatred and division, the riots throughout the world, and so Barnabas may be the one that we pray to. Barnabas is known as the patron saint of peacekeepers, the great saint. And so we look at how division happens, where it is within our church, and there's lots. Within family life, there's division. Within our communities, within our parishes, we can look back at our own lives and our own communities, wherever we are, even at our workplace, and you and I can recognize, my gosh, we are not so Christian. But may we pray and seek the intercession of St. Barnabas to bring reconciliation, to bring peace, to be a bridge, all those beautiful images, because true Barnabas, Paul was entrusted with the great proclamation of the gospel. Without Barnabas agreeing and being a bridge, Paul would never have written the scriptures. So we give thanks through the intercession of St. Barnabas. And as we celebrate this month, dedicated to Blessed Mary, may Mary, the Mother of the Church, bless all our families, and may peace be within. And in a world that is divided and in chaos, and yes, filled with anxiety because of the pandemic, 
may we realize prayer is the key that unlocks the heart of discouragement and allows the Prince of Peace, the light of Christ, to enter. The scriptures tell us, to our second reading of St. John, I give you a new commandment, love one another. And to love one another, it is not selective. As difficult as you or I may be to get along with, Barnabas says, let us be people of peace and let Christ be the center. Amen. My friends, tonight as we celebrate the Eucharist together, I thought it would be very important for us to welcome our new parish administrative assistant, of course, Cheryl Byrne. And I think we'd like to introduce Cheryl to her. She's new at our parish office. We, uh, we uh, carried her over from Mary Queen of the World. And so I'd invite Cheryl to come forward, to stand at the center, to be the center of attention, because I think you'd like to know who she is with her mask on. And so I'd ask Cheryl, Cheryl, are you, you are called to a most important work in our parish family. You are often the first person that people will meet when they come seeking assistance from our parish. You are a very important member of our parish family, sharing in the administrative tasks of our community. Because of your knowledge and competence, you have been chosen to share your gifts for the well-being of our parish of St. Peter's and the building up of the kingdom of God, not just for St. Peter's, but as we make every effort to unite as both parishes, St. Peter's and Mary Queen of the World. Therefore, I ask you, Cheryl, are you willing to respond to the commitment of your own baptism by serving God and your neighbor in all your duties? Are you willing to be a person of welcome to all who come to this church, recognizing in every person there is the face of Christ? Are you willing to use fully your gifts in every task, carrying out the most ordinary jobs with extraordinary love? Loving God, maker of the universe, you continue to love us with providential care, and you invite us to share our gifts for the good of your people. Bestow your blessing upon Cheryl, our parish administrative assistant. Help her to serve your holy people with patience and understanding. May she welcome all people in your name and let everyone know that they are all members of our parish family. Let the work of Cheryl be pleasing to you and help us all to grow in your love that we may strive together to make present your reign. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. I invite Peter Furlong to present Cheryl with a copy of the Bible. Cheryl, receive this to symbolize your call to both welcome people into our church and to help in the administration of our parish. Amen. Let us, my friends, give thanks to God for sharing the work that she does. And thank you both. Peter is the vice chair of the parish pastoral council, so he has been chosen to do this wonderful moment of passing on the most precious gift, the sacred Bible. Kindly stand, my friends, and we pray together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty, from there you will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. My friends, we seek God's blessing to be faithful to the divine Jesus Christ and to be faithful as members, branches of Christ, which forms our faith community. As we celebrate this month of May, we seek the intercession of Blessed Mary. Response, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the church. May we have the grace to remain close to Jesus, just as the vines are close to the branch, so that our lives are always fruitful. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all communities overwhelmed by COVID, 
May God slow the spread of the virus, give strength to all caregivers, and open opportunities for the distribution of vaccines. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all workers and those looking for work. May St. Joseph the worker be their model of patience, justice, strength, and obedience as he guides and protects them each and every day. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all who are sick, suffering, and in need of our prayers. Please name those for whom you wish to pray. Today we pray especially for Ann Russell, Eric Howlett, Kevin Wright, Jennifer Best, Jerome Kavanagh, Derek Dooling, Bill Callahan, and Jean Butler. May they experience the healing and mercy of the great physician. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our beloved dead. Please name those for whom you wish to pray. Today we pray especially for Cecilia Sparrow, Charles Evans, Teresa and Patrick Day, Geraldine Hartree, Kenneth Walsh, Mary and George Briffitt, Margaret Miles, Leo McKenna, Maureen Gallant, Louise Geiger, and Kay Pierce. May they share in the vision and glory of God's eternal kingdom. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. As we celebrate today the feast of St. Joseph, the patron saint of all workers, we pray the prayer for the year of St. Joseph. Hail, guardian of the Redeemer, spouse of the Blessed Virgin Mary. To you, God entrusts his only son. In you, Mary placed her trust. With you, Christ became man. Blessed Joseph, to us too, show yourself a father and guide us in the path of life. Obtain for us grace, mercy, and courage and defend us from every evil. Amen. In the month of May, we honor Mary as we pray. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Kindly be seated for the liturgy of the Eucharist. Pray, friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Father, the Almighty. May the Lord accept his sacrifice to join us. Praise the Lord, in his name, and O God, who by the wonderful exchange effect in this sacrifice, you have made us partakers of the one supreme Godhead, grant, we pray, that as we have come to know your truth, we may make it ours by a worthy way of life, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. 
It is truly right and just. It is our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but on this very day, above all, to lodge you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true lamb who takes away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death and by rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy. Every land and every people exults in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. You there, for Almighty Father, we bless you through Jesus Christ, your Son, who comes in your name. He is the hand that brings salvation. He is the word that you extend to sinners, the way by which your peace is offered to us. When we ourselves had turned away from you on account of our sins, you brought us back to be reconciled, O Lord, so that converted at last to you, we might love one another through your Son, for whom's sake you gave your life on the cross. And now celebrating this great gift of reconciliation, we entreat you to sanctify these gifts by the outpouring of your Spirit, that these gifts may become the body and blood of your Son, whose command we fulfill when we celebrate these mysteries. For when about he was to give his life to set us free, and as he reclined at the supper, he himself took bread. He broke the bread, gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took a chalice, and again he gave you thanks and praise. He gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Celebrating, therefore, the memorial of the death and the resurrection of your Son, who left us this great pledge of love, we offer you what you bestowed on each one of us, O Lord, a perfect sacrifice of reconciliation. Holy Father, we humbly implore you that to accept us together with your Son, and in this saving banquet, a grace endow endows with the very Spirit, who takes away everything that estranges us from one another. May he make your church a sign of unity and an instrument of peace among all people. May he keep us in communion with our Holy Father, Pope Francis, Peter, our bishop, and all the bishops and your entire people. Just as you have gathered us at the table of your Son, so also bring us together with the glorious Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with your blessed apostles, with all saints, St. Peter, with our brothers and sisters and those of every race, language, and tongue who have died in your friendship. Bring us to share with them the unending banquet of unity in a new heaven and a new earth where the fullness of your peace will shine forth. In Christ Jesus our Lord, amen. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
in a world that is often stained by words of, of discouragement as well as actions of discouragement, let us pray to live as Barnabas to encourage each other to follow the way of Jesus. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ, for the kingdom. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give to you. Look not on our sins, but on the fate of your church. Graciously grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. May the peace of the risen Lord be always with you. Let us offer each other a sign of the peace of Christ. Behold Jesus, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of this world. Blessed are we who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be the body of Christ.
Let us pray. <clears throat> Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord, and lead those who have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our well, friends, thank you very much for gathering this evening to share the Eucharist and have a nice week. As I acknowledged before Mass, there's a lot of uh, new ideas on our parish website for youth as well as for adults. It's a great moment to uh, just to uh, follow up on some of the great work that is happening with our youth group. We had a regional pastoral council this morning, went on for two and a half hours, but that includes all the parish in this area from Bell Island to uh, Conception Bay South, way up to uh, Fairyland. So we had a lot of uh, about 17 or 18 of us, and I got to say that uh, our parish of St. Peter's and Mary Queen of the Water doing very, very well. So I want to say thanks to all who make it very special during these difficult COVID times. I know the COVID times are difficult on all of us, especially when it hits home. And of course, whether you have loved ones at home and great concerns, I know it's a tremendous lot in Fort McMurray, Alberta. My nephew this morning, is, I guess he's 30 years old, he has COVID, and he's at the hospital today, brought in for oxygen. And so his mom as well got COVID, so there's a Tremendous amount that's increasing in Alberta and Toronto area, and I believe it's 148 cases in uh, Halifax today, and five or six here. So we got to be careful within our churches, and we really got to be cautious about how we interact and giving each other space, and because that's very, very important. So, the families who are praying for your loved ones at home or sick in hospital, I know uh, many have asked us to pray for them. I know who you are in Alberta, so we were certainly uh, praying for your families, our families. As he asked me, he said, now at Mass tonight, pray for us, and we'll be watching. So to those in Alberta especially, and families and friends elsewhere, we are praying for you and for full recovery to our family members. I just want to say also this week, this weekend, within the Eastern Orthodox Rite, that's the Coptic Church, they have a small church down here in Jersey Street. 
the Coptic Church. This is their Easter. And so yesterday, uh, Friday, they had their, uh, that was their Good Friday. And so they started prayers here yesterday morning. Their building is not big enough. So they asked would they come here. They're very much connected to the faith of Jesus, the Eucharist. They have all this same as we do in many ways. But they had their Good Friday yesterday, and I was amazed. Uh, they started at, uh, I guess, 9 o'clock, and they stayed to 4, and it was constantly prayer. And I, there was a number of kids there, and I said to the kids, are fasting part of what you're doing today? Oh, yes, and I mean young kids. And they said, oh, yes, we fast. I said, how long do you fast for, for your Easter? Uh, 55 days, 55 days of fasting. And so the kids, yes, I said, can you do that? Well, yes. I said, why would you fast for 55 days? That's a long while, cutting back and reducing all the whatever. Well, he said, we want to purify our hearts for Jesus. So I thought that was a very beautiful image. And today in their church at the Coptic Rite, which is, uh, they're using Mary Queen of World Church tonight because they couldn't come here, we have mass. But they're starting this evening at six and they'll finish at one o'clock tomorrow morning. And of course he said, now you're coming over around 11, are you? I said, okay. <laughs> so I will go over there. But they have a beautiful liturgy, some reverend prayer. So they are praying their Easter uh, tonight. And I think tonight I'm going over because they have a great feast at 12.30. So I'll join in for some Eastern, for some of the Coptic food that they have on the go, but that should be a lovely hour together. And they are just wonderful people. The average age, very young people, very, very young, 20 year olds, 25. And so they're very much uh, tuned in with their faith. And so we pray for the blessings of them during the Easter season. And above all, let's pray for our families during these COVID times. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you and bless our families, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. The Mass is ended. We go forth living the life of the gospel by the lives that we lead. Thanks be to God.